Our next guest, you know him, you love him from Inside the NBA, that show that's won every single Emmy it's ever been nominated for, ever, ever in the history of everything. He's also <laughs> a two-time champion with the Houston Rockets. He won a national championship at North Carolina. And he's got a new book, Talk of Champions, Story of the People Who Made Me, a memoir. The rare book Stugatsa has two colons in the title. Hmm. I like it. Yes. Can Kenny, I got to ask you, uh, there's a famous clip they always show of you on Inside the NBA. You I believe as a kid, maybe 7th, 8th grade, when you played at Madison Square Garden, and the mm. caption calls you Ken Smith. Is that the first yes. time in history we've ever had a child named Ken who grew up to be a man named Kenny? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the funny part of that is? You know, you know, back you know, in, the, in that, that era, you would never call Ken. Kenny, you would all, or Kenneth. It was always, it. I mean, Kenny, it was always Ken or Kenneth. No one called me Kenny a lot, a lot of times. And then right around, the, right in the mid 80s, it became Kenny. And, uh, <laughs> but the funny thing is last night, you know, because they, everyone knows I'm a New Yorker. No, I, you know, at the, at the core, I'm still a Nick fan. They were like, we're going to call you Ken and we're not giving you an NY back unless the Knicks win. <laughs> You're not getting it back, Kenny. <laughs> not till next I'm year. I'm going to be Ken for the rest of my life. <laughs> Wait, so Let's Kenny, go, New York. <laughs> I mean, Kenny, I'm a Knicks fan, and I've been waiting forever, like most Knicks fans, for them to be relevant and good again. But there's no way you think this team or thought this team was good enough to advance past the second round, did you? Well, I mean, I think once, however, once Miami won, I think that there was there is a, a a collective thought in the city that they could, uh, not if Milwaukee had advanced. But you know, I honestly, which was crazy, I I picked Miami, which was like blasphemous. I got calls from all the regulars, from Stephen A. and Spike, <laughs> like saying I was blasphemous for picking Miami. I just thought they were a better team overall, maybe not individually in certain spots, but I thought they collectively were playing better. Kenny. You said on Undisputed that you think Michael Jordan would have struggled in the social media era. Uh, obviously, you and MJ go all the way back to North Carolina. Why do you say that? In I think it was a little bit out of context in terms of struggle. I meant, like, his popularity would have been too much. Like, the guy was the most recognizable face, him and Michael Jackson, like, in the world. And you can imagine if social media, when you can have that instantaneous oatmeal... Mm. and, like, get everything for him because – and everyone's like, well, you, social media. We had social media. It was just called a newspaper. It was archaic. <laughs> but it was just <laughs> – but everybody – he was in every newspaper and every sports channel. So to get him instantaneous and to also see what he does on his normal life, walking around, people filming him in hotel lot, like, his popularity would have been too much. And I, I it would have been something – that I don't even think he would have wanted. You don't think it would have been like he accidentally posted a selfie on Twitter and everyone was like, oh, like you're such a boomer, like that kind of thing, struggle? <laughs> no, I, no, because, you know, the one thing about Michael that separates him from LeBron is, like, to me, he's the first of his kind. Like, what Michael was doing, the reason it was so intriguing as well as, you know, he was winning was that we had never seen him win that way and his ar acrobatics and the way he played the game. With LeBron, when he's at his best, he's taking the best of the best player in the world. So he's taking the best of Magic. He's taking the best of Jordan. The best. So we've seen it. But with Michael, we had never really seen it. Dr. J was close, but not what Michael was doing. Like, we just had never seen that before. And that, with social media, oh, my God. It, oh my, yeah, it, too much, man. But, Kenny, there are two things that separate LeBron and Michael. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Two rings. Uh -oh. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and but hey, the guy's still playing, so we can't say two rings. We might not be saying two rings for long, because he's still playing, and you know, in year twenty, he still looks like he's in year ten. So who knows how long this guy's gonna play? Uh, but you know, I, I just think that you know, when we talk about the comparisons, it always talks about the gravity of an era you lived in, because. I'm old enough to be in both. So I understand what that shot against Elo really meant, other than it was a great shot. It was like he, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers were about to possibly win some NBA titles with that team. Mm. And he, he, made, he made them dismantle it. So, like, 
I understand the gravity, just the way I understand the gravity of what LeBron when he beat the Pistons. Like, so I, if I compare gravity, I always take Jordan. We're talking to Kenny Smith. He's a co-host on Turner Sports Inside the NBA. They have the exclusive rights to the Eastern Conference uh, Finals. And, of course, he's the author of the new book, Talk of Champions, Story of the People Who Made Me a Memoir. Stugatz, this is the question I got for Kenny because he played with Michael Jordan in North Carolina and they won a championship there. But he played with Hakeem Olajuwon Mm -hmm. with the Rockets in the NBA and they won two championships there. The two years Michael was out. And Stugatz, you always say that if Michael had never retired, what would have happened? Kenny Smith would not have two rings, nor would Elijah Wan or Tom Janovich or anyone on that team. I mean, why you put me on the spot? But, Kenny, that's the truth, right? I, I think you're 100% wrong. What? Yes. There you go. 100%. Let him know. We, 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 we would have won. I mean, and I'm going to explain it to you. So you have a different, a different record. Because everyone has a different reference of how this happened. First of all, do you really believe that the Michael Jordan would have won eight championships? Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. However, did you watch the documentary? Uh, yes, uh, 17 times. Okay. <laughs> so there would have, there, there would. First of all, he was back when we won. He was wearing number 45, and when he got 55 at the Garden, nobody was saying he was rusty. Yeah. The reason <laughs> double nickel. The reason that the reason they lost to the, the, the to the Orlando Magic because there was no Horace Grant. They were small. They were a small team then without Horace Grant. So he was in Orlando. The reason Orlando beats them is because they're small and they have Shaq and then they have Horace Grant. They out-rebounded them. They're pounding them inside. We would have done the same exact thing. We swept the Orlando Magic, the team they lost to. We swept them. So that's the first part. The second part, there was no Rodman yet. Rodman comes two years later. So then Rodman comes, and now they got the rebounder. Now, if you ask me, can we beat the Orlando, I mean, the uh, Bulls with with, with uh, Horace Grant or the Bulls with Rodman, I'd just scratch my head, and that'd be a different possible answer. But the small team, as we've seen in the documentary, that was breaking up, are we smacking them? <laughs> but Michael Jordan was still the greatest player in the world, but he just would, wouldn't have had the greatest team at that time. What's the most – misunderstood thing about Michael Jordan, you think? Well, I, I, I'm, when I, even in the book, I'm referencing a 19, 20, 21 year old mm-hmm. Michael that I knew from college. The guy that, you know, when you're on the road as a freshman, they put you with the upperclassmen and they say, you got a room with this guy on the road. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm referencing all of those, the vulnerability of what his dreams and aspirations were when you're sitting up and talking at night at two or three in the morning like, what you going to do with your life when you grow up? So, like, those are different references, I think. So, you know, what I always noticed about him is he's the one guy who always could back up his thoughts. Like, I'm going to – he could back it up. And because I thought he was the perfect size as a basketball player, and what he doesn't get credit for is being the most fundamentally sound basketball player that, that possibly have ever lived. He gets credit for his acrobatics. But if you look at the, the tapes, he's in the correct hand in the passing lane. He's, um, his footwork is impeccable with it on the jab step. In the post, he understands where the dynamics are, where the double teams are coming. That's what made him great to me. They were, the guys who were athletic as him, they usually didn't do that. And that separated him from all the other great athletes that played in that era. Kenny, what do you make of Jimmy Butler and really the transformation later in his career where I don't know if there's a historical comparison where a guy kind of bounced around the league, was kind of a you know locker room cancer, uh, according mm. to many people inside the NBA. He was, I mean. Mm. Um, and now you have a guy that's being talked about in the same sentence as LeBron and Kobe in terms of postseason assassin, postseason killers. Um, what do you make of what's happened to Jimmy Butler, his game, and the transformation uh, later in his career? Are you talking about Michael Jordan's son? No, nah. I, I saw the memes too. Yeah. I saw the memes. I saw the memes. I saw the memes. No, you know, I, I think that you know Jimmy. Jimmy is like it, it's kind of like the the yelling coach. When they're winning, people go, "Oh, that's in great intensity." The guy fires everyone up. But when they're losing, oh, the team is tuning them out. 
He's a cancer to that's Jimmy Butler. He's the yelling coach. So like his style of play is either when it when you're winning, it's going to get praised, but when you're losing, could be viewed as disruptive. So he just found a group of guys that embraces the lack of disruption. We're talking to Kenny Smith. He's the author of Talk of Champions, Stories of the People Who Made Me a Memoir. Kenny, what's something, you know, every, every time someone writes a book, there's always stuff that gets left on the editing room floor because of <laughs> space and time, whatever. But what's the best story that didn't make the book? Ooh, I, well, you know, I think I got a lot of it in because, because what, what I was really wanting to do when I realized, I was like, I just want people to feel good about themselves when they read the book and go, man, when I'm successful, oh, that's why, because that's what Michael does. Michael Jordan, that's what Bill Russell does. That's what Shaq does. And I'm talking about from a political standpoint, from a social standpoint, and from a sports standpoint. Those are the characteristics that I have. Oh, I have a friend that I wrote, you know, that wrote in there, David Kohler, who was, the head, you know, head of the Kohler family, the plumbing. The guy was sleeping on my couch in summer school, and he's worth $7 billion. But those conversations, I'm like, I always thought that there was more to it. You know, a guy, Oseri, who, you know, manages Sting, Madonna, one of the biggest names in entertainment. You know, this guy, you know, slept on my couch for 45 days. He was like, so, like, those stories that I took for granted. And you know what, other guys? I took for granted that everyone had access to Bill Russell's and people like that. I took for granted Dean Smith. And when I started writing a book, I was like, man, you can't take this for granted. And I sent the, I sent, I was sending in chapters to the editor and he was like, bro, you know, everybody you writing chapters about have books about their life. And I was like, man, it's, it's, it's that I had access and have access every day to these type of people. I thought if I knew this at 20, man, how, where my life even would be different now. The book is Talk of Champions, Stories of the People Who Made Me a Memoir. His name is Ken Smith because the Knicks ain't winning until next year. Thanks a lot. Yo, there's no NY in my name, baby. Come on, man. <laughs>